Howdy, my name is Wes Cole. This video is a production of Wes Cole Enterprises, LLC. Um, the reason I'm doing this video is because it is required in my MBA 710 class, Fall 2016 with Dr. Annette Rogers. Um, and if I can start with one key point, it will be to not procrastinate like I'm doing right now with this video. It is due today, and I'm starting today, because um, I have a lot of confidence in speaking about myself. Like most things, though, and uh, unlike most things so far in the MBA program and throughout the Barney undergrad program, is that procrastinating is not a good thing. So if there's one thing you can take from this video, it's don't procrastinate. Don't be, don't be like me. Um, throughout this video, I'm going to discuss a lot of me. <laughs> Surprise. Um, I'm gonna, but the key things I'm going to discuss are challenging the process, um, complimenting others, especially when you're in a, leader, uh, a position of leadership, and having a vision, uh, and sharing that vision, and being enthusiastic, passionate, and um, have a plan for that vision. Uh, you're not always going to know the end result, but if you realize that the process of everything you do in life is the most important thing, then you will have great success. Take it from me. So, first section. The journey of Wes Cole. All right, so... In this segment, I just wanted to talk about um, the journey of how I got here, um, and a little, you know, some side stories of how leadership, um, how I've had to excel in leadership at times in my life whenever I didn't know I had it in me. Um, so, uh, again, my name is Wes Cole. That is W E S C O L E. Uh, I'm from the Woodlands, Texas, which is about 25 miles north of Houston. Uh, it's the last civilized suburb um, north of Houston until you're out in the middle of nowhere. The town northeast of me is called Cut and Shoot. And that's not and, it's in. Um, so my journey here, uh, I didn't even think about the University of Hartford until I received a phone call from an assistant men's basketball coach uh, in early August 2010. Um, he told me that they were interested in me, or this, the men's basketball team was interested in me, which was great news to me, um, because the only other schools recruiting me were Southern State schools, whose academics were awful, and the Citadel, which is the military college of the South, which, if you know me, I don't have a lot of structure, and I don't like to, you know, abide by rules and listen to people. So me coming here felt like the best choice, off the court and on the court. Um, I committed here on my official visit uh, on September 30th of 2010. I believe it was a Friday. It was a dreary day. I committed at Brico's over in West Hartford, uh, which is a really good spot if you guys haven't been there. Um, so, but before that, um, I realized early on that I was going to pursue a degree in business from a young age. Um, I thought in numbers with everything, even things that didn't have a numerical value, I would have placed a number on them for some odd reason, which I always thought was weird growing up, but now I see it as kind of a blessing. Um, and the biggest influence in my life, my father has owned his own business since he, I was three years old. And um, just being around him from the time I was eight, nine years old, him driving me down to baseball practice in Houston, him just, you know, ramming on about numbers and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, I think being around that from a young age um, gave me a good, pretty good perspective of what I wanted to do. Um not how I was going to get it, but that I wanted to be around business. So um, when I got to Hartford, I um, 
knew I just, you know, wanted to get a business degree. I didn't know how hard it was. Um, I didn't know how much I was going to have to apply myself. Um, but from what I learned out of class is that social skills are very important to have. And you will see throughout your time here in the Barney School of Business and especially later on when you're um, networking to you know try to find an internship or try to find a job that having social skills and being to uh, being able to uh, kind of relate to whoever you're talking to is, is extremely important if not the most important thing um, which I uh, was quite the partier and so my social skills excelled here at the University of Hartford and um, through that uh, I was able to land an internship uh, in Houston going into my senior year and um, I've been able to meet a lot of people and I actually think I just landed an internship for this upcoming summer um, because of my networking and social skills so um, that's all I'm gonna say out of out of context for um, the business school but um, I think the most important thing that I can tell you from my experience in the business school is find something that you're passionate about whether that's management whether that's marketing, whether that's accounting, finance, economics, whatever it is, um, find something you're passionate about and then let that lead you into what you want to do. Um, finance was the really the only thing uh, that I found fascinating in, in my time at the business school. Um, marketing concepts and stuff like that is cool because you can use that in everyday life, but um, I really found finance, especially international finance, to be um, the most interesting thing to me. Um, so one of the key bulletins that Dr. Rogers wanted us to discuss with you guys was challenging the process. Um, in my position as a graduate assistant for the men's basketball team, I am on the bottom of the totem pole. I am the last in the pecking order. So it's really important for me to not challenge the process you know, all the time with my head coach or say an assistant, uh, because I am the bottom of the bottom. Um, and it's also the same way with players. When an assistant coach tells them on an everyday basis of what they're doing wrong, what they're doing right, uh, I have to be very calculated and, and direct, uh, with what I tell guys. Um, KYP, know your plan. If you're going to challenge the process, you need to have a plan. If you don't have a plan and you're going to challenge the process, don't challenge the process. Because um, usually when you challenge the process, somebody that is in a superior role to you is going to want a thorough explanation as to why you are challenging what they are trying to do, their agenda. And if you don't have a well thought out plan or um, you know, at least an idea, it probably won't go too well for you. Enabling others to act. In my uh, everyday life right now, when I receive a compliment or a coach tells me good job, you know, keep up the hard work, I take that as a good thing. Um, and I think whenever you are around people you know, you don't want to over compliment because then, you know, then you just lead to entitlement. But whenever you know somebody has worked hard at something and they have reached a certain goal or they've just done a good job that day at doing whatever they were supposed to be doing, it's very important, um, especially to somebody that was awful at complimenting, um, to do that for somebody. Um, Showing somebody that, yes, like, you know, you do do a, you know, a good job of what you do to me is um, very important. Having a vision leads to having a shared vision. Um, when I came to the University of Hartford, I knew my head coach had a vision of turning what has historically been one of the worst programs in Division One into a predominant mid-major program. That process, that vision is still in the works. Do I think it's going to get reached? Yes. Um, do people on the outside see that happening? No, which I think 
makes it even more beautiful. Um, but having a vision and embracing the process to me is something that I wasn't told, you know, throughout high school at all. I never worried about the process. The only process I ever worried about was getting into the gym and getting better at basketball. Um, but from what I've learned from my head coach, who has been my biggest mentor with the exception of my father, um, is that when you have a vision, you need to share it if you're passionate about it, um, which um, I can apply to almost everything I do now uh, that I feel passionate about. So for me, having a, um, a vision and sharing it with others and being passionate about it um, is something that is very important to realize going into business school and is something that is even more important once you're out. What I really wanted you guys to get out of this video was to basically just like we were having a conversation talking about what you could expect going into business school. Um, it's like a sibling, you know. Um, I talk to my sister on an, almost a daily basis. Um, I have a roommate now who's also a grad assistant here uh, that I, you know, he's like a brother to me now. Um, and then I have my teammates from college that um, I talk to almost daily. You know, we tag each other in Instagram posts and tag each other in Facebook posts and stuff like that. Um, so I think that, you know, what I really wanted to get out of this was just basically to give you all some, some knowledge. If you can take away anything from this, take away something. Um, you're going to learn a lot about yourself while you're in school, in the classroom, and in and, and social life outside of the classroom. Um, and to say whether or not which one's more important uh, to somebody that has learned almost everything the hard way outside of the classroom, um, just embrace every day and, and realize that, um, you know, you want to help others, you want to do the right thing, but um, don't worry about things you can't control and have a plan for your future. You might not know what you're going to do. You might change your plan weekly. I change my plan every day. I don't know what I want to do, but if there's something that being, um, you know, having graduated from Barney, it taught me... Um, countless life lessons about valuing yourself and and really you know focusing on um, maybe you know the process maybe you don't know why you do it but if you worry about how you're going to do something um, you'll be all right last thing um, I'm going to sound like a coach here but every day is an opportunity um, my first two years of college, I didn't do a lot of putting myself in situations that were going to make me feel uncomfortable. And one thing that I've realized now is that when you put yourself in situations that make you feel uncomfortable, that are out of the norm, that make you grow as a human being, um, it helps you in the long run. It, it only improves your confidence, whether that be... Um, talking to somebody you have, you don't know who they are, what they do. They can barely speak English. Um, we've got multiple guys on our team. we got a Serbian on our team that I can barely understand. We've got an Egyptian on our team that I can barely understand at times. But um, putting yourself in situations that are out of the norm and also really taking um, everything that um, you learn from people and, you know, putting it in perspective so you can take something from it. Um, you know, like I said earlier in the video, I learned in numbers. And so when someone would show me a, you know, an art picture, somehow I'd apply that to numbers. Um, so finding a way to, uh, creatively learn for yourself, in my opinion, has some, been something that has helped me. Um, it helped me later on in in college, and has helped me in the uh, year and a half since that um, 
I've graduated. Um, I hope you guys take at least one thing from this. Uh, again, my name is Wes Cole, and uh, good luck to you guys.